All right, and so you should at this point have finished module 12 and completed parts one through two um, before you're moving on to this one. But anyways, so before you begin this, please make sure that you do um, the activity at the top of module 13, the part three, um, and then you can get started and move into the guided notes. So module 13 is all about something called a divided or a split brain. And this can be a little confusing to understand because it kind of goes against everything we understand about our brain. But um, so we're gonna get into what this is and talk about how it shows us um, a little bit more about understanding what each kind of side of the brain does. So first and foremost, we have to think about how our brain is divided. So if you remember from last week, our brain has two hemispheres. Um, I'm trying to, I wish I could pull up the image, hold on. So in the textbook, if you're in module 13, which I am I'm trying to scroll here, you'll see this picture also in, um, in your worksheet for the day. But so we have two parts of the brain, right? So we have this part, we have the left, and then we also have the right. We call this the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. As you can see, it looks like they're kind of like, they're very clearly two different parts, but there's this part underneath there that combines them. So we have one brain in our head, right? We don't have like a left brain and a right brain. So sometimes you see people saying, well, I'm left brained and I'm right brained. That's not really a thing. We don't have like a left brain and a right brain. We have a left hemisphere of our brain and a right hemisphere of our brain. We have two halves of the brain, but they don't do like, it's not like somebody only their left brain is working and somebody only their right brain is working. Um, that is a false statement, but each side of the brain does kind of help with different things. But going back to this middle part here, the thing that brings these two halves together is this thing called the corpus callosum. So the corpus callosum is basically this like large group of neural fibers, so just a, a bunch of mass that connects the brains um, to hemispheres and it carries messages between them. So this corpus callosum is the thing that makes us have this one conjoined brain. However, what we're going to look at in a second is in some instances, and this is extremely rare, there might be a case when you have to cut the corpus callosum, AKA dividing the brain. So when people do this, um, it's usually because they've had a surgery. It's not like um, this is something that naturally happens, but so some people, very, very few people in the world have a split or a divided brain, and this is a condition. So whenever we call something a condition, it means something that is like, it's probably something that has occurred as a result of something. So it's a condition that results from surgery that isolates the brain's two hemispheres. So it's basically dividing the brain into two halves that aren't connected anymore. And it does this by severing or cutting the corpus callosum, which is the thing that connects them. So on the other half, so you're like, whoa, okay, I've never heard of this. And the reason why you've never heard of this probably is because almost all people have an undivided brain or what we would say a normal brain, right? So an undivided brain is what we all have. All of us have an undivided brain because our corpus callosum is intact. So an undivided brain is a brain whose two hemispheres are still connected and communicate normally with one another. This is about 99% of people in the world. So all of us, um, I, I know that you all don't have divided brains because you would be functioning very differently if you did. So this is the normal state of our brain. But as we're going to look at it in a little bit, when you have this divided brain, you begin to really see which things the left side specializes in and which side the right special or what the right specializes in. So how are these two hemispheres different? So again, we don't, once your brain is divided, um, you begin to really see what the left does and what the right does, and they aren't communicating with each other anymore. So it is kind of like you actually have two brains working in your head at the same time, which can get really tricky. 
So the left hemisphere, so the side on the left, it helps us make quick, literal interpretations of language, and it also helps us with speech. So the left side is helping us um, be able to say what we're seeing or communicate what we're hearing, things like that, reading out loud. Um, and again, it also helps us with quick, really quick kind of literal interpretations of language. So things like um, just asking like, like, hey, what is this a picture of? And you could say, oh, that's a picture of a dog. That'd be like a quick literal interpretation, something like that. The right hemisphere helps us with visual perception, making inferences and recognizing emotions. So this is the more kind of like nuanced side of it. So this would be like, if like I think back to global history, if I showed you a picture and I said like, based on this photo, like what do you think was going on? That would be your right hemisphere is helping you with that, more inferential, um, making kind of those deeper connections. So our our brain, both hemispheres are doing this constantly. It is always doing these things and they're communicating these messages. But when you have a severed corpus callosum, when you have a split brain, this becomes kind of weird because you're basically, and this is what the video will show you, you kind of have like two brains working at the same time, but they're not talking to each other. So they can do things differently. So at the beginning of this lesson, if you actually did the activity where it asked you to, um, what did I ask you to do specifically? It said you should grab a piece of paper and a pen and try drawing a circle and a square at the same time using both your hands. This is pretty hard for us as humans. Like I've done this a few times, so I've practiced it, but you'll probably see that like your circle and your square kind of look similar. Like your square might be more round and your circle might be more pointed because it's, it, we're trying to do two different things. You, It's just difficult or our mind isn't supposed to do that. But when you have a severed brain, it's like you have two, like the right side of your body can do its own thing and the left side is doing its own thing at the same time. So it's pretty incredible actually. Um, and if you're looking at, so this image here, and I'm gonna break this down actually in a second. So you should have taken the notes here and you're going to watch this video. And this video is about a guy who actually has a divided brain. And you're gonna see how he is able to do certain things very differently than we would be able to. So the thing they're gonna actually show you is um, something, it, they basically give him kind of like an experiment. They will basically, they show him things like, um, I actually think there's another, sorry, I don't need to show you grades. They basically do an experiment kind of like this, um, where they show him certain things. So they show him like this word heart, right? They show him the word heart. But because he is kind and it's divided, it's divided down the middle. So they, so there's very clearly a left side and a right side. So in the man with the divided brain, when he sees this, he basically divides the information into into two and he sees he and art as two different kinds of things. But, and here is the crazy part, because each side of the brain isn't communicating with each other, they can't be like, oh, you're seeing he and art, that means that spells heart. That's not what his brain's doing because they're not communicating with him. So, and if you remember from last week, whatever you see, whatever is going on, like on one side of your body, it's being processed by the other side. So he is seeing he and art here divided by two. Art is being processed in the left side of his brain because that's what he's seeing on the right. He is being processed on the right side of the brain because that's what he's seeing on the left. Therefore, when he's asked, and in the video you'll see this, and it's a little bit different, but when he's asked, what word do you see? He says art because the left side deals with speech. He's able to say he sees art. However, then they say point with your left hand to the word you saw because the right side of the body helps with the other parts, it doesn't deal with speech. He actually can't say that he saw he, but he's going to point to the word he. So it's like he's not seeing this all as one. He literally has no idea that 
this says heart. He's only seeing that there's he and then there's art and he can verbalize that he's seeing art, but you can only point that he's seeing he. So it's this crazy thing where, and you'll see here again, if you were to ask somebody, what do you see? They would say, I see an apple. And they'd say point to what you saw. They would point to seeing a pencil. So this isn't what we would say that we would say, I see it. I see an apple and a pencil because our brain is communicating as one. It isn't divided. But when you have a split brain or a divided, severed brain, you are processing things differently. You're only getting half the story at the same time and it's not coming together fully. So that's what this video is going to be about. And it's a really cool experiment. So definitely watch it. And you're going to see the guy, um, this is like a well-known um, psychologist who does this experiment and it's pretty fascinating. So you're going to watch that. And then the last part of your assignment is this video reflection. So basically you're just writing a short reflection, a couple sentences, just saying, if you had a divided brain like the man in the video, since we don't, how would this impact you? So I want you to think about how would this maybe impact how you're able to speak or process information? Um, how to way, how to change the way you act and process info? How would you feel about these changes too then? So I want you to reflect on it. Um, definitely watch the video before you do this. It is necessary. Um, it gives you more understanding of this. And then once you're done, that is it. Um, this assignment, I know it's a makeup week technically for non-AP classes, but you do have the whole week to finish this. So um, try to get in by Friday as well as completing any other missing work that you might have that you need to complete.